24, for everlasting God. Again, that's page 24. Isaiah 40, 28 says, Do you not know? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He will not grow weary or tired, and his understanding no one can fathom. He is the everlasting God. Himself in 
intercedes for us through wordless groans. And he who searches our hearts knows the mind of the Spirit, because the Spirit intercedes for God's people in accordance with the will of God. And we know that in all things, God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. For those God foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brothers and sisters. And those he predestined, he also called. Those he called, he also justified. Those he justified, he also glorified. What then shall we say in response to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all, how will he not also, along with him, graciously give us all things? Amen? Amen. Who will bring any charge against those whom God has chosen? It is God who justifies. Who then is the one who condemns? No one. Christ Jesus, who died more than that, who was raised to life, is at the right hand of God and is also interceding for us. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall trouble, or hardship, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or danger, or sword, as it is written. For in your sake we face death all day long. We are considered as sheep to be slaughtered. No. In all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. Amen. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, mm -hmm. neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, or anything else in all of creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. Amen. May God and his blessing to the reading of this word. To God and Amen. 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 Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you very much. In a moment, we will be receiving your tithes and your offerings. And so you may want to prepare those and you know that we present our tithes at the end of the service as we put our tithes in the offering box as we leave church. We'd like to thank all of you that have continued to donate and to contribute to the ministry. And our ministry is growing because of you. We are being good stewards of what God has given us through you. And we thank you very much. Those that are viewing us on the internet, we say thank you for your financial support. We thank you for just looking for us and finding us and giving us encouragement through the many emails that you sent to Hope Center of Christ. And I'd like to welcome ah, my family member that's back today, Ms. Mack, now or at the end of the service, and we can make that happen for you. Amen? Amen. Amen. We serve a wonderful God. I'd just like to read something here that pastors don't know I'm going to read it, but I'm going to read it. <laughs> because I haven't heard it in quite a, such a long time, and I was going through some of my notes, and I read the whole Center of Christ mission statement, or a vision statement. It says, bring the hope of Jesus Christ to the center of human hearts through faith, hope, and love in action. Amen? What a worthy goal, right? And I would be amiss if I did not think about those that sacrificed their lives on 911 or 9-11. At least us never forget those uh, Americans that lost their lives or perished in that attack from the terrorists on 911. We must remember that. 
And so I found a little poem, a little poem written by some eight-year-olds. Eight, eight they wrote a poem, and I thought it was apropos. Sometimes the eight-year-olds and the children are very revealing in their relationship with the Lord or their relationship with what's going on in the world. We can learn from children, in other words, right? This goes, it says, list of don'ts, don't forget, and remembers. A list of don't forget and remember. We were eight. Before September the 11th, we would wake up with a list of don't forget. Don't forget to wash your face. Don't forget to brush your teeth. Don't forget to do your homework. Don't forget to wear your chat. Don't forget to clean your room. Don't forget to take a bath. After September the 11th, we wake up with a list of remembers. Remember to greet the sun each morning. Remember to enjoy every meal. Remember to thank your parents for their hard work. Remember to honor those who keep you safe. Remember to value each person that you meet. And remember to respect others beneath. Now, we are nine. Amen? Amen. So September the 11th, we wake up, we woke up to a threat of terrorism. It was forever bookmarked in our history as the day when life as Americans, as we knew it, changed forever. But there's one thing that never changed, and that's the love and power of Almighty God. Amen. 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 Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, as we bring our tithes and our offerings into your storehouse, we ask that you would bless them, dear Heavenly Father. We thank you for blessing the giver as well as those that receive. We thank you, dear Heavenly Father, for your many blessings, gifts of time and talent and treasure. You are so wonderful, dear Heavenly Father, and worthy to be praised. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. In Jesus Christ's precious name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Harold. Yes, it is fine. And for our next song, go ahead and turn in your songbooks to page 78. For we are more than conquerors. Amen. Again, that's page 78.
just passing around some handouts for you today. And first of all, I have to tell you, I put the wrong chapter number at the top. It says chapter four, it's actually chapter six. Now, unless you all think I'm crazy or stupid, and I could be both. But truly, what happened was I was working on the study guide for chapter four as I was working on the message for chapter six. So I got confused on my number. So there you go. So you're going to have to mark that through with a pen and put a six there, put a smiley face next to it. And you can put next to it, Sheila's crazy, Sheila's stupid, Sheila's both, or neither, or all of the above, whatever you want to do. It's okay. We're on chapter six of this book that God told me to write. I have no doubt about it. I don't hear him audibly, but there are times when he gives me an idea, a thought, and that's not mine. It's so far out of left field. It's so not me. And that's how this was. I call it my chicken vision. He gave me my chicken vision on June 14th when he said, Sheila, I want you to write a book. And the title is The Heart of a Warrior Delivering the Children of the World for Christ. Subtitle. And honestly, and you heard me say this. At first, I did not understand this assignment because this was an assignment from God. I didn't understand it at all. It didn't move my heart. It didn't do anything. I, but I'm so obedient that I wrote it down and I thought, okay, okay, Lord, I, I will do this for you. And I began to work on it. And as I worked on this book, I will tell you that I am not the same person that I was back on June 14th. I'm a different person. I am. It did something to me in a beautiful way. I had no idea, and I have been a child advocate my whole life. That's why I ended up in education. That's why I have a doctorate from UCI in education. That's why I worked with children my whole life, because I love children. I'm a mother. I'm a grandmother. And I have prayed and prayed and prayed for children to be delivered, to be healed my whole life. And I had no idea that all the children of the world were being so viciously attacked as they, as I now know. And I'm basing that, yes, the Lord kind of said, he said, Sheila, you need to take a look and see. And I went into the data. I started looking at the statistics. And I, it was the process of writing this book. First of all, I was all like, wow, this is exciting. Oh, this is wonderful. Oh, this is humbling. God, that you would ask me and our church to do this for you and for your children, we... We are humbled and awed and grateful that you would think enough of us to use us, amen. But then I also, my heart began to break, break for the children, for what I'm seeing. But this is a book of hope. This is a, because the book, he, as I began to work on it, I realized it's a, it's, the book is just a mechanism to launch an international prayer movement, an international prayer movement to get churches all over the world to begin to pray for the deliverance of the children from demonic attack. Absolutely, that's what that's what it's all about. And so, um, so the book is just a mechanism. So today we're on chapter six, and it's, it is six. It is fight with holy fire power. Hmm. Holy fire power. How many of you? Carolyn used to live here in California, so you get to raise your hand too. How many of you are, fam are familiar with California and our fires that we have here in California, most of you? And you all know that, that we can see when all it takes is a tiny little spark or an ember, and especially when the wind kicks up, you can have a complete devastation and loss of homes and buildings and lives and, and trees. It just can sweep and devastate and destroy all kinds of loss with these fires. But on the other hand, on the flip side of these fires, we also have, I learned as a prior science major, that new life seeds. There are seeds that lie dormant all over these forests. They're covered over with a lot of the, the uh, needles and underbrush, but there's little tiny seeds of trees that lie underneath and they lie dormant until they are ignited and their life is fired up and fueled up within them through the intense heat of a 
the forest fire. So this is what the, so the fire not only destroys, it has that side of it, but fire also ignites life. It fuels passion. It fuels a fighting spirit, and it's necessary. This whole prayer movement, the only way that it's going to be successful is if the Holy Spirit begins to ignite little sparks here and there and there all over the world. Imagine a globe or a, or a map of the world and a little spark over here and a little spark here, a little spark in Africa, a little spark in China, a little spark in Russia, a little spark down in South America, a little spark here in Orange County, a little spark everywhere, right? And then imagine the Holy Spirit, which is also called Holy Numa or Holy Breath, comes and whips those sparks into a raging Holy Spirit wildfire. What can happen? What can happen to our world, to our children? It's necessary. We need this today because don't get discouraged. Don't become discouraged when you see and hear things in life. And it can be discouraging. But God has planted seeds, just like he's planted all those seeds in the forest. He's also planted seeds of a warrior heart in you. Little, little seed that he put in a little protective shell that he planted in your heart. And it has been lying there dormant all your life. You didn't know. I didn't know. Did it to me too. I didn't know. Then all of a sudden, the Holy Spirit moves. Holy Spirit prayer. Wow. All of a sudden, you'll be like me. Oh. Wow. I need to fight for the children. Yeah. These seeds that he's planting you are seeds of hope. They're seeds of love. And these are seeds of fiery indignation. Enough is enough. Amen? Enough is enough. Enough is enough. I say to the enemy, you cannot kill, steal, and destroy our children anymore. Anymore. The growing demonic attacks, and I've never been one to talk about the demon. I've never been into, into demonic or any of that, or deliverance, any of that, until just recently. This is all new for me. All new. Especially, I am not completely new, but this is, I'm now I've entered into a whole new era of understanding and awareness because the Lord has called me to fight. And he has shown me, and I don't mean I've been actually seeing it, but I've been hearing it and becoming aware. He's raised my awareness of the demonic attacks that are children all over the world. You know, the media is doing it for us. This is where you, I first began to see it. The Lord showed it to me and said, Sheila, you need to be aware of this. The next thing you know, I'm seeing and I'm noticing, right? Now my eyes are opened. Now my eyes are open, and I'm going, oh, yeah, that's right. As I listen to the news and there's a parent and two or an aunt and an uncle or a mother and a father and they're sitting there going, they're telling the news people, our son took a pill, didn't know it was laced with fentanyl, and we found him dead. When are we going to stop losing our children. I hear that. Okay. Another one. My nephew got gunned down by a bullet with crime in the city. When are we going to stop losing our children? And stories of suicide from ages 10 on up. And parents saying, when are we going to stop losing our children? Yeah, I, I don't know about you, but I'm not letting him, the enemy, get away with taking the life of one more child. Yeah. I refuse. Yeah. I refuse. I, it matters not to me what people think about me. It matters not to me what they may say about me. It matters not they can call me anything they want to. But it I don't, doesn't matter to me. All that matters to me is to... Be faithful to my Abba and say, yes, Lord, I will 
lead this prayer movement to deliver the children of the world. Amen. And it's going to require holy fire. The Holy Spirit fire is required for what I'm calling the Great Awakening. This is a Great Awakening that is beginning right here in Hope Center of Christ. We are sounding the alarm. Church! People who love children, wake up! <laughs> wake up! Because dormancy has been going on for too long. Think about it though. A dormant seed is not a dead seed. A dormant seed is just a sleeping seed. It's just dormant. And so we want, we ask and we pray for the Holy Spirit to ignite that fiery passion, that fuel within these dormant seeds and hearts all over the world. We've been in, con in communication with churches in, in, in Korea and in Kenya and in South America as well as here in America. And they are all saying, yes, yes, yes. It is time to sound the alarm. Wake up. Wake up. Wake up. This is the great awakening that's needed to raise up a global army. I was living this quiet, peaceful life as a grandma. <laughs> Had this beautiful church that I love pastoring and mentoring and leading you and being with you. Bible studies, discipling you, teaching you how to pray. Teaching you how to pray the way Jesus taught us to pray with the Lord's Prayer. Amen? And then this whole thing has jarred me from my peaceful shalom life as a grandma. As a grandma. And so I traded in my apron for armor, traded in my rolling pin, which I love to use, for a sword, for a sword. I've traded sleeping in for fasting and praying day and night, and I do, and I do. I fast and pray. Daniel did it for his nation. I do it for the children of all the nations. It's time to let the Holy Spirit Fire, fuel you and forge you. Yes, you, yes, you. <laughs> if he can do it with me, a chicken, a grandma. If he can do it to me, he can do it in you. The fierce warrior God made you to be. Because I know those seeds are in you, they are there. So we want this Holy Spirit revival. We're praying for it. We're praying for it. Just like it happened at Pentecost. Because this is what happened at Pentecost. Jesus rode into Jerusalem on Sunday, Palm Sunday, and then he was killed that Friday. He rose again on Sunday, and he was seen, and people talked to him, they touched him, they supped with him for 40 more days. Pentecost, Pente Jesus arrived at the time of the Feast of Passover, and then there is also the Feast of Pentecost, which came 50 days after the Feast of Passover. So 50 days later is Pentecost. Jesus is here for 40 days. And then he ascends to heaven. But just before he leaves, he says, don't worry. I'm sending to you a helper, a comforter, the Holy Spirit. Wait here in Jerusalem, he said. Jesus said, wait here in Jerusalem. one verse four. And then, ten days later, this is what happened. You've got Bibles in front of you there, so you can take them out and turn to page 771. 771 or Acts 2, if you have another Bible that you brought with you. Acts 2 or page 771, because we're going to read this together. And you have it. I'll just hear a little amen or a hallelujah. Amen. amen. D. D's on the spot. Okay, Acts 1. That's my duck red, so I'd like to do one. Acts 1, verse 1. When the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place, all of Jesus' followers. 
Suddenly a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. Now they were staying in Jerusalem. Now there were staying in Jerusalem, God-fearing Jews from every nation under heaven. Just hold that open there for a minute. What was heard that day? A rushing wind. Hold the Greek for Holy Spirit is holy pneuma, holy breath, holy wind. And what did people say they saw on the others? They saw tongues of fire, flames. Now this was not, I do not think that we can interpret this as a physical fire, like they were on fire fire. But the glory of the Lord was so radiant on them that they looked like they were on fire. They reflected the fiery glory of the Lord. So, and they, what was there? There were all these people. There were people from every nation. Every nation. So when you think about this movement that God's asked us to do, right? If we have little sparks, little tongues of flames of Holy Spirit sparks all over the globe, all over the world, and then this holy fire breath sweeps and whooshes it. Yes, it could be a repeat of Pentecost. It could actually do this. We can take our lesson from Pentecost. We know that this is what God can do. And I've already been hearing reports, oh, yeah, I have a Holy Spirit fire in Madrid, in England, Scotland, Iran, Russia, China, India, Ghana, Nigeria, just to name a few. Just to name a few. These reports of Holy Spirit sparks of fire are in keeping with the prophecy of Joel. Acts 2, are you there still at Acts 2? Turn down to page 17, I mean verse 17. In the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions. Your old men will dream dreams. Even on my servants, both men and women, I will pour out my spirit in those days, and they will prophesy. So we see this. These reports of Holy Spirit sparks of fire being ignited today. This is good news. I like to welcome you back into the house of God in hopes that of Christ. I like to welcome anyone that's with us for the very first time, please feel free to be at home, to be, be at home here in the spirit of God. And for those of you that are here, whether you've been here before or whether you're old members, if you have not received Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, finally, we would like to make that happen for you. So if you want to be received into the kingdom of God, we can talk to you now. Because it means that all of these churches and all these people can be awakened. They can join the great awakening to pray for deliverance for the children of the world. This fire of God, it ignited the deliverance movements of old. Fire. It's a common feature in scripture. Especially when God needed to ignite a movement of deliverance. Let's look at... Moses. So now you can turn to page 41 in your Bible, or Exodus chapter 3, verse 1. Exodus 3, verse 1, or page 41. You know the story of Moses. Everybody here has heard the story of Moses. Listen to this. Verse 1, now Moses was tending the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian, and he led the flock to the far side of the wilderness and came to Horeb, the mountain of God. There the angel of the Lord appeared to him in flames of fire from within a bush. Oh, here we go, right? Flames of fire, just like we saw at Pentecost. Moses saw that though the bush was on fire, it did not burn up. So Moses thought, I will go over and see this strange sight. Why the bush does not burn up? When the Lord saw that he had gone over to look, God called to him from within the bush, Moses, Moses. And 
Moses said, here I am. Do not come any closer, God said. Take off your sandals, for the place where you are standing is holy ground. Then he said, I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. At this, Moses hid his face because he was afraid to look at God. It's a powerful story. Powerful story. Similar to Pentecost, do I believe that this is a physical fire? Probably not. It was probably a spiritual fire. A spiritual fire with the radiance of the glory. The glory of God is always described as fire. 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 Holy Spirit, fire. Moses needed this to fuel and ignite the movement God had called him to. He was called to go to Pharaoh and ask for the deliverance of all his children. That sounds a little like what we're doing, right? Just a little bit. Moses had to go to Pharaoh and tell him, I want, God wants you to let his people go. Deliver his children from the slavery that you have them bound in. Very much like what we're doing. Of course, this didn't go down well with Pharaoh. Moses was a little resistant even. And um, Pharaoh even said no. <laughs> no. When he finally did say yes, he changed his mind. He came charging after them, right? He charging after them and they pinned them between an army, an army including people on chariots with swords and bows and arrows and the Red Sea, an uncrossable Red Sea, and they're trapped. Trapped. So, Moses, of course, he parts the Red Sea with God. God does it through Moses. And they get across, and they're delivered. Wow. Deliverance. It's all about deliverance. Deliverance. It's all about deliverance. God wants to deliver. God is beginning a movement to deliver. To deliver. We see in his word that he did it time after time after time. And he frequently used fire. Most of the time he did. So he delivers them. And then they're, so they're delivered and they go right into the promised land. No, 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 no. <laughs> Are you guys with me? Are you all asleep? <laughs> they, they went into the wilderness. Remember? They find themselves in the wilderness and they're like, wait. We thought we were being delivered. And they were. It didn't feel like it. It didn't look like it. It did. It was not what they had hoped or expected. It happens in life. It happens in life. It happens to you. It's happened to me. Where you thought you were being delivered to the promised land and you were delivered to the wilderness. Then what? Now what? Ooh, it's so easy to say, God, I'm going to blame you. I'm going to shake my fist at you, God, because I thought you were going to deliver me to the promised land, not this wilderness. Well, I don't know what I'm going to eat today. I don't know where I'm going to find water today. I don't have anything over my head. And not only that, I have no shelter. And they even grumbled and blamed Moses and they said, look, we'd rather go back and be slaves back in Egypt than be delivered to this wilderness. That's what they said. Moses went to God and he goes, God, look at these people that you asked me to leave. They're, just, they're being miserable. <laughs> and they were. So what did God do? God was there with them. His presence was there with them. In the wilderness, it says every night, every night, he was a pillar of fire by night. 
never left their side. He never left their side. He was there with them every single step, every single night, for a total of 14,600 days and nights. God is there. When you can't see how you're going to make it, when you can't see where your next next meal is coming from, when you can't see how you're going to make rent, when you can't see if you're ever going to get your children back, when you can't see it because you're in the wilderness, 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 and it goes on 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 and it goes on. Don't forget, like Pastor Bell said, remember, God is in the wilderness with you and he will never, ever
There are times when you will face in life and you'll go, this is insurmountable. I shouldn't be allowed to do this. I'm too old. I'm just the grandma. I, I don't have my, my seminary degree. I don't have this. I'm a woman. I'm not supposed to be preaching. Blah, 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 blah. I heard it all. I've heard it all. But you know what I say about all that? It's just water on the altar. It's just water on the altar. Those obstacles, those oppositions, those things that come against you that you can't get past, it's water on the altar. This is an opportunity for God to demonstrate how powerful He is. Amen. So, yeah, everything's wet. Everything's wet. And Elijah goes, God, show your power. Show your glory. Let your children know again that you've not forsaken them. Let your children know again that you delivered them, even when they even when they turn their back on you. Let the children know that you are God. And fire rained from heaven and consumed the altar. It says it licked up every drop of water, even in the trenches. God is God, God is God, God is God. I wrote this in the book. When the odds are against you, God is for you. The worse the odds, more glory there is for God. God. God loves it when it gives him that much more of an opportunity to show his glory, his power, his love, his undying love for his children. So today, I'm calling you all, as I have been, to pray. To pray for the children. To pray for the children. And ask God to give you holy firepower in your prayers. Holy firepower in your prayers. This is the same power that raised Jesus from the dead. Ask him to light a fiery passion to burn within you today. I'm going to close with a prayer on that. And ask him to awaken and ignite and empower an army of God's children who will pray with the heart of a warrior and deliver all the children of the world everywhere. So, today I want you to Stretch your hands to heaven. Stretch them up just as high as you can. Straighten up those fingers like you're reaching heaven's gate. Just stretch them up there. Holy Spirit, I ask now that your glory, your firepower, will come and fill every single one of your children within the sound of my voice. May they see and feel and know and have no doubt And fill them. Burn, burn, burn. Hmm. Burn within them. Ignite dormant seeds. Burst into flame. Pray for the children.
going to be I see the Lord on page 42. Again, that's page 42. Come on, stand to your feet as we heard this message. We are worshiping God our Father. Our Lord Jesus Christ, thank you, Father. We worship you, Father. We thank you, God, for your amazing power, that fire that reigns all over us, Lord, that fresh fire that you are giving us, Father. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you. Praise you. Just, just worship as we sing this. Worship to the Lord, the Lamb, the Lamb of God. Praise your name. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you.